the patient had carbo, carboplatin gemzar with her last treatment and had a complete response. She now presents with disease again in the lung and an elevated CA125. So if she stayed platinum sensitive, she could be re-challenged with a, a carbo, um, likely doxel, um, because she hasn't seen that in her treatment. Um, and then I would definitely add a PARP inhibitor in maintenance after sh as long as she's shown a response to the platinum. Um, otherwise, she has other uh, options um, depending on her platinum sensitivity. If she was platinum resistant, she could see Doxel alone with Avastin, Topotecan, um, plus or minus Avastin. She could see Olympta. Um, and we don't know this, her genetic status, actually, so I would definitely make sure that we had we assessed her um, BRCA status and HRD status. The patient in this case, because we don't know her genomic or somatic testing, should have both blood testing for BRCA as well as HRD testing. One thing about HRD testing is that all patients should have, like I said, BRCA testing, so genomic testing, full panel, as well as somatic testing, specifically looking at HRD. I don't think that CA125 predicts response to treatment. You know, I, I think CA125 is a good um, marker for response, and it's important to know if somebody ha somebody's CA125 is a predictable marker for them. Um, but I don't know that an elevated CA125 versus a lower CA125 is predictive of response. This patient particularly does have a low BMI, and low BMIs can um, potentially predict toxicity to treatment. Um, particularly, patients may have lower uh, reserve, um, lower albumin, um, and that may actually uh, show that there's higher toxic. Patients may have higher toxicity with cytotoxic chemotherapy. Um, we do know that patients who have lower BMI may also have higher toxicity with immunotherapy, specifically PARP inhibitors.